Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Hi, Teresa. Hey, happy Wednesday to you. So how is everything going on your side of the world this week? Pretty quiet, I think, honestly. Fall is kicking in. Leaves are starting to turn. Yes. yes. So, yeah. so nice. By the end of the day, some of my friends are like, oh, my God, it's beautiful outside. I'm like, is it? Like I have to let me get up from my seat and peel my skin off and, and go check out outside and see what it's like. Um, so yeah, always interesting. So today's topic is interesting to me. I actually, we did not discuss this before we went live and I did not read your blog yet, which there is a link in the description above, but how do you improve your website in 60 minutes? That doesn't seem long enough to make a difference to me. Well, when we first put together our website, we're so focused on what we want to communicate that there's a lot of common things that we do that really don't support the website that we can go back later on and fix literally over a cup of coffee. And so that's kind of what I'm saying is like, grab a cup of coffee, sit down and let's look for, and I've got, and you won't need all of them. But I think I have six things here. To look okay. for that you can do quickly and easily that is going to improve your website so the first one is to eliminate the squish above the fold and we kind of talked about that in our last website wednesday how we want to squish everything we think is important above the fold yes and what we want to have there is what our customers think is important which is what you can do for them and how they can contact you and get started. So grab a laptop or your computer, sit down and look at your website, that first impression. Are you feeling bombarded with information like you just landed on a news website? If you did, then you've got way too much above the fold. And again, what can you do for them? How can they get started? That's what they wanna know. The rest is gonna unfold naturally when they're interested in what you have to offer. Good advice. I mean, this is so simple. I, I struggle with the same things, right? I'm always trying to throw everything into my website. Wait, they might need this. They might need that. And then one person says, I didn't find this on your website or it was hard to find. And I'm like, wait, we need to put that up higher. Suddenly everything is up higher. I know. I know. <laughs> and then like you said, it's like cluttered and com more confusing to the masses, right? Edit. So you're talking about editing. Edit down. Edit, edit it down. Okay. Keep it clean and simple. And right now, honestly, the trend is a really good eye-catching photo with a tagline that grabs attention and a call to action button. Yes, you want your navigation menu up there. Of course, you're going to have that. But that's really what people are looking for right now. We are so bombarded with things. We want a breath of fresh air and some simplicity. And your website can give that to people by just eliminating everything above the fold. Okay. Or squishing everything above the fold. Squishing everything above the fold. Okay, so that was number one. Let's go number two. Number two, do you have a simple, easy action step? That is something that I come across often and people are like, well, but I have a contact page. Yep, but the contact page is not as powerful as we think it is. Right there above the fold again, do you have a quick and easy action step that basically says, click me. Because I want to work with, you want to work with me. You know, something that grabs your attention. Book a consult, like really clean and clear. You know, grab your freebie or whatever to get started. Or whatever your first call to action is. That What you want them to do it should be right. front and center. This is the way, I've used this analogy before. And I'll do two things right now. Above the fold means before someone has to scroll down. Yep. So when we first hit your website, whatever comes up on the screen is called above the fold, for those of you who don't know. Number two is that easy entry into what someone really wants from you. I call that your front door. You've got to let them open the front door. You can't have it. Yeah. Right. Don't. And my analogy is always if you were a storefront, which I want you to think of your website as a storefront, even though you're not necessarily selling direct product, but what does someone yes. want when they come to your website? They want to be able to open the front door and talk to someone or open the front door and get what they need. So what is your front door? Make sure that's the button that that. above the fold. Okay. Yeah. Simple, easy. 
put a button above the fold that has them wanting to click. The primary thing that most people will want to click when they get to your website. And yes, there'll always be exceptions. There'll <laughs> always be exceptions of people who want different things and they may have to search a little bit, but you're still going to make it easy. But that first button should be what most people want when they come to your site. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. So that was number two. Number three, ensure that contact information is no more than one click away. Now, and I said just a moment ago, people put a lot of faith in that contact page, but you still want to have it easily available to people. You don't want them to have to dig and look for ways to contact you. Maybe they're not ready to book a consult, but maybe they want to send you a quick email or a quick message and ask you a question. Maybe they want to pick up the phone. You do get to decide how you're going to be available, but you've got to make it easy for people to find it. I did an audit one time where um, the only contact me link on the whole website was this tiny little font in the paragraph and in a paragraph on the about page. Oh, and she's like, I can't understand why people aren't contacting me. It's like, cause they don't know how they can't find it. <laughs> they can't find it. It was this tiny little yellow words. Contact me in the third, second, third paragraph on the about page. Nobody yeah, can find it. So contact information, if you can make it immediately available in the header, the footer or something, great. But no more than one click away. Make it be easy for them to contact you. Right. So if they click it, it feeds into their email system. If it's the email yeah. right, that it automatically brings up their email with you as the two, like make yeah. it a click, make it a clickable link and easy make to a clickable link. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was number three. Uh, number four implement security. Now, a lot of people have this in place, but I still come across way too many websites that don't have that SSL, that secure shell certificate. And I'm going to tell you right now, you just as well close out your website right now if you don't have it, because you are not going to get found in Google, Google, Chrome, all the browsers are like blocking you saying, this looks unsafe. Don't go here. You are not really website. Yes, you've got to have that secure shell. And most hosting companies offer it for free, and you just have to click the button to turn it on. Now, many are switching to where they just turn it on automatically. I was going to say, why don't they do that? Why are they making and it? It's so a matter fun? of technology getting put into place because okay. it's a little bit more than behind the scenes and a click of a, the mouse. But like Squarespace, they built their platform to where everybody's automatically secure. So if you're a Squarespace user, just, you know, toast yourself because you're in a good, you're already there. I'm not, but I'll toast myself with my coffee anyway. <laughs> but make sure you have that turned on and make sure that you have it set to be in Forge. So if somebody goes to the unsecured version, like HTTP, you know, nancygansacoffer.com, it'll automatically redirect them to the secured location. So that's something I can't tell you how to do it. You got to talk with your hosting company, but they will make sure that you know how to do it because it supports them. It helps them when you do that. Okay. So, and one last thing for my WordPress users for security, do your freaking updates. Yes, you need to update your plugins. Yes, you need to update your themes. Yes, you need to update your uh, WordPress, you have to do those things. And if you do it on a fairly regular basis, it's really not going to be scary and overwhelming. And it, it's, it's not scary and overwhelming. What do happens it? if you don't do your updates? So, which I think most people, if they try to manage their own website, which is one of the things that I tell people you should not be trying to do because it's so complicated. It's like doing your own accounting sometimes. It's just not worth it when you own a business. But so what do they do if they don't do their updates? You're opening yourself up to vulnerabilities. And I have a perfect example here. I have one of my very first clients. She wanted to manage her website herself. She didn't want to pay the maintenance fee. I get it. Taught her how to do it. Showed her how to do it. Fast forward two years, she had not done it. She had never installed updates. Mm -hmm. And then the tools that we use, there was a big vulnerability because they're really popular tools that came out. And everybody said within the company, you know, if you've been updating your website, don't worry, you're good. Her website completely crashed, was hacked, and was redirecting to a porn site. Oh, my God. 
that would freak me out. <laughs> so $200 later, having to have the malware and all of that removed and working with her hosting company and stuff, $200 for just the removal of that piece to restore her website, it's back up and going. So that, I mean, like that's literally what can happen if you're not doing your updates. And I go $200 in 20 hours times my hourly rate is a way more than $200 to the aggravation and the embarrassment, right? She, but it is, for a week. she, how long? Uh, she was down for a week. We were able to determine when she got hacked and she was down for a week before she even knew. So how many people went to her website and found porn and didn't even tell her? I mean, the nightmare of that, you know what I'm saying? So, you you just got to do those updates. I don't know. Was I talking? I was talking to Megan yesterday for um, Money Talk Tuesday, and at one point, I'm like, I joke around with my kids, right? You have to learn to adult. There's certain things that, as an adult, you should do. Otherwise, it will sneak up and bite you in the butt when you get older. Like pay your taxes, get your car inspected, right? When you're a business owner, there's certain things that you have to do your adulting as a business owner and not be a child business owner, but be an adult. And I know that counts, sounds kind of harsh, but there's so many little things that business owners want to not do and avoid and think it's never going to catch up with them. And then when it does like your story, oh, what a nightmare. It's huge. And if you have a web designer that you're working with, you know, like I install my updates, like my clients, that's one of the reasons they get me for a year is because I want to make sure that everything goes smoothly and I take care of all of those updates. But make talk to your web designer and ask them, make sure you understand who is responsible for that piece. There are a lot of WordPress designers that do not do updates for their clients. So you want to make sure that it's happening and taking place for you. Okay. Okay. All right. So heed is that that was six, right? No, no, that was that was four. So we had two more, and they're much bigger. The WordPress update got us going. So okay, so number five, super easy. Look through the pages of your website and make sure that you have really clear titles and descriptions for each page. When I see really long, lengthy paragraphs, not gonna read them because I don't have time. I might tell myself I'll come back later but I almost never come back later. I mean, I have a folder of saved stuff in my Facebook page of articles that I was gonna come back to that I just deleted like 30 of them this weekend. So make sure it's super clear, get to the point. What is that page about and what, you know, give me the title and description that's quick and to the point. And I love this because you're saying how you can improve your website in 60 minutes and these are the things that when you're entrenched in doing your website, these seem like great ideas, right? Yeah. Oh my God, this is the greatest idea. Let's put like these, you know, <laughs> three long paragraphs to describe me and what I do or my process. But then when you go back and look, you go, oh my God, that was just way too much. That was way too much. Way too much. Let me cull it down. So yep. it's again, that editing process of culling your website down to what a client, potential client, wants to see and no more mm -hmm. and no more yeah get to the point the more is going to come when they hire you yes so yes. get to the point okay. okay and the last one and this is really to support it has it has two wins here for one you're supporting your seo but you're also making your website ada compliant so a big win there as well and that is adding alt tags or alt text to your images and in my blog post i have a quick screenshot of how to do that in wordpress and squarespace so you can see where to go what i'm talking about but what you're doing an alt tag or alt text is just telling the person, if there's a screen reader, if they're blind or if it, you know, visually impaired, they're using a screen reader. And so what happens when they come across images, it, if there's no alt text, is it says image, image. Oh. So when they come to that image and you've described it, it doesn't have to be a paragraph, you know, like it could be something quick and simple. It could be the title of your page or blog post. It could be, you know, um, Happy National Coffee Day, cup of coffee or something. I mean, like, super simple. Something but, that's descriptive, though, for the visually impaired. And also Google no. reads those descriptions. Yeah. So they know what the image is about. And now Google's going to look at that and make sure that the image has got that. But also, is it relevant to the content of the page? 
So that's why you want to put those in there. So not only are you supporting your, your SEO, but you got a big ADA win going on with there that as well. Love that one. I yeah. used to, when I did my own website, I used to make sure we always had the alt tabs at all, mm -hmm. just alt descriptive words in the back. And even when I was an art consultant on house, I never did the paid version of house, but I would upload pictures and make sure all everything that allowed me to put words in, I made sure I put descriptive words in. And even without paying for house ever, I got a ton of leads from them because, right? So it's the same with the website. Yeah. Whenever you have this ability to put in alt tab, alt words in the background, you should do it. Absolutely. It is so important because it just, it helps people more than they realize. And it's one of those things that will say, I'll do that later. No, you won't. Just do it every time you put an image on your website and then you don't have to go back to later because if you have to go back to a whole website worth of images, like if I had to go into your website right now and add alt tags to everything, I it would take a lot more than a cup of coffee. To right, because then it's a project as opposed to just part of your SOP, your standard operating procedure. Every time I upload a picture, these are the steps I take. Make sure that's one of the steps. But if you haven't done that, in the next 60 minutes, in 60 minutes, I should say, yeah. you could you you yeah. could do this while you're having a cup of coffee, start catching up. Yeah. So, and if you never if you have a lot of images, oh thanks, Evelyn. Thank you so much. But if you've never updated your images and you have a lot, you may need to spread this out. But if you just sit down once a week over a cup of coffee and update as many images as you can while you drink that cup of coffee. In a month, you'll be caught up and you'll be fine. And you'll be fine. <laughs> okay, that's the hope. <laughs> All right, so if they need help with their websites, creating their website, modifying their website, checking to see whether they're web designer, I don't know if you do that, but to me, that's a helpful thing. If there's somebody who could say, is my web designer doing like a little bit of an audit type of thing? Yeah. Well, actually, I do offer. So those of you tuning in here, if you want a free website audit, head to my website, webdesignsbyteresa.com. And there is a box at the bottom of the page where you can sign up to get a free audit. Um, yeah, it's I mean, it's done personally by me. So it's not some auto generated report that just gets sent to you without anything. You get a report, you do get a report, but you also get a quick video from me that tells you how to, you know, give you tips on what to do for your website. So total no brainer considering every single person I've ever referred to you has come back to me and told me how happy they are with their website and with the process because you're very organized and you have it down to a system that satisfies everyone who comes to you. So um, thank you for that. Cause when I refer people, it's really important to me that they, stay on the ball and that people are happy. Yeah. So Thank you. <laughs> always get happy when I refer you. So anyone who needs a website, check out Teresa web designs by Teresa. Um, and we'll be back next week with wisdom Wednesday. Yes. Don't know what our topic is yet, but we did decide in advance. <laughs> so we will see you next week and I will see you guys tomorrow for my industry chat. So thank you, Teresa. Amazing tips. Thank you so much for always having me here. All right. We'll talk to you everyone, everyone soon. Bye, everyone. Have a Bye. great Wednesday.